Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we will be taking a deep dive into the Undivided Warband upgrade tree for the Warriors of Chaos rework in the upcoming Champions of Chaos DLC. As you can see on the upgrade tree shown here, there are a total of 20 Undivided Warrior of Chaos units that are shared amongst all four of the new Legendary Lords in the upcoming DLC. And starting from the left side, we have the Chaos Trolls, which is a monstrous infantry unit that can be upgraded to its more powerful armored variety at rank 3. And if we just compare the stats between the two units, it becomes pretty obvious that the only change between the two are the 70 extra armor value, which equates to an expected value of roughly 52.5% of base damage negation. I say expected value here because armor values have an equal chance to roll 50% effectiveness, 75% effectiveness, and 100% effectiveness for every attack in Total War Warhammer games. This means on average you can expect to block for 75% of your armor value. Of course, this is only relevant on base damage, so the upgrade here is great for protecting your oversized trolls from lower tier range units and spells, as those typically are mostly base damage. Overall, the trolls are a great unit, as their high per entity health and passive regeneration ability makes them sticky, while their high speed, mass, and damage allows them to be great flanking units. Their only apparent weakness is their low leadership of just 40. Even though I often found this to be actually helpful, as trolls have a tendency to waver, retreat, then regroup, which actually gives them a reprieve to utilize their regeneration abilities instead of having them fight to the death. Then moving on to the Marauders, which is the core base unit for any Warrior of Chaos campaign, and his alternative form, the Great Weapons Marauders. And if we compare the two units here, you can easily see that these units are designed for different purposes. The standard Marauder is your all-purpose unit that uses Axe and Shield, with the Shield providing 35% range block chance, while the Great Weapon Marauder is an offensive unit that sacrifices 8 points of melee defense, which equates to 8% dodge chance, to increase its weapon damage profile from the 21 base and 7 armor piercing on the standard Marauders, to the 7 base and 23 armor piercing damage with the Great Weapon. There is also a 4 point charge bonus difference, which means the Great Weapons Marauder will get 4 extra points of melee attack and 4 more points of damage, added to their charge attacks, which is a minor bonus, all things considered. Overall, you should use the standard Marauders if you're looking for a static frontline unit, or if you're facing a range-heavy composition, or opt for the Great Weapons Marauder if you're planning on charging headfirst, or if you're facing a heavily armored enemy. Now regardless of which versions of Marauders you go for, at rank 5, both units can be upgraded to the Chaos Warriors, the Chaos Warriors with Great Weapons, and the Chaos Warriors with Halberts. If we first look at the general stat increases from these upgrades, we can see that we're going from a 100 mass infantry unit to 160 mass. Even though the number of entities per retinue will drop from 120 to 100 and the overall health will drop, the per entity health, which is more important, will actually go up from 78 to 90. Now per entity health is important because of spell damage, which can affect the entire retinue equally. So having more health on each entity allows the whole unit to remain combat effective even after tanking a few spells. Armor is also going to get a massive upgrade from 15 to 100, while shield on the standard Chaos Warrior will also improve from 35% range block chance to 60%. Leadership will also jump from 60 to 75 but these higher mass and armor does come at a cost to speed, which drops from 35 to 28. Weapon strength overall is getting an 8 point increase in the same ratio of base and armor piercing as before, while the charge bonus will also increase a little bit. Now more importantly, we will have a third variety in the Halbert, which is a specialized anti-large unit. If we compare the two varieties that we had previously to the Halber variety, we can see that the standard Chaos Warrior are still the best frontline unit when facing range-heavy compositions. They also have more melee attack and defense as well as charge bonus, 
but suffers from having most of their damage on base rather than armor piercing compared to the two other varieties. Meanwhile, the Great Weapon variety is still the best offensive unit as they have 16 extra charge bonus compared to the Halbert, and 6 extra melee attack and 4 extra armor piercing damage, but they do suffer defensively by having 10 less point of melee defense. But Halbert Chaos Warriors will have a 19 point bonus damage against large modifier added if they're fighting a large unit, whether that is a cavalry or a monstrous infantry. And there are two additional passive abilities in Charge Defense versus Large and Charge Reflection that will make the Halberd Chaos Warriors even better. Charge Defense versus Large is a charge negation that reduces any large unit's charge bonus to zero when the Halberd Chaos Warriors are braced. Charge Reflection, on the other hand, will double the Halberd Chaos Warriors' damage against any charging enemy if, once again, it was braced. So overall, the standard Chaos Warriors are going to be your best frontline unit against range-heavy enemies. The Great Weapons Chaos Warrior are best used as charging offensive units. And the Halberd Chaos Warriors are best used as static defensive units against enemies with large units, especially on your flanks. Then at rank 7, all three types of Chaos Warriors can be upgraded into any of the three types of chosen units. As you can see, the three types are still the same, so instead of breaking down the differences between the three again, we'll be taking a look at the improvements between the Chaos Warriors and the Chosen. First, the mass actually stays the same for the standard Chosen and the Great Weapons Chosen units at 160, but the Halberd Chosen will get a mass increase to 210. This makes sense as having a higher mass will help them stop the charge of large units, which they are designed to stop and kill. The total entity count goes down once again to 80 from 100, but the total health as well as the per entity health vastly improves. Armor and leadership both improve marginally from 100 to 120 and 75 to 85 respectively. Melee attack and defense all see massive improvements across the board for the three varieties in different mount as shown here. Well, weapon strength is also improved by 12 points across the board in the same base and armor piercing ratios. The halberd bonus against large is also improved from 19 to 26, and the charge bonus on all three varieties also sees a 6 point improvement. Overall, all three varieties are still used for the same purpose, but the unit quality vastly improves across the board from Chaos Warriors to the Trozen. Finally, the Chosen can be upgraded to a Aspiring Champion with no rank requirement, but in all honesty, this is not exactly an upgrade, but rather a transition. Unlike the previous upgrades from Marauders to Chaos Warriors to the Chosen, the Aspiring Champion is just a very different unit. Instead of being a standard infantry unit, it now only has 16 entities per retinue. Even though their per entity health is much higher, their overall health still takes a massive hit. And while the Aspiring Champions are not considered monstrous infantry, their mass of 600 definitely gives them that feel. The leadership also dropped by 5 points, while the speed goes up by 4, melee attack and melee defense drop by quite a bit, but Aspiring Champion gain magical attack, which helps them bypass physical resistances. And even though on paper it looks like it will have a higher weapon strength, I would actually argue this is an illusion, as you're now dealing double attack on one-fifth of the entity count. So if you assume that at least 32 of your 80 Trozen units are going to be engaged in melee, then the Trozens will have the same if not more damage compared to the Aspiring Champions, especially if you also consider the massive dip in melee attack and defense between the two units. And lastly, the Encourage passive ability which increases the leadership of nearby allies it's really not going to make that much of a difference, so why on earth would you upgrade your Chosen to Aspiring Champions? Well, earlier I said that this was not an upgrade, but rather a transition, as if we look at the Warband upgrade tree, we can see that both Marauders and Aspiring Champions can upgrade their way into the Forsaken and Spawn of Chaos units. So perhaps if you didn't go the Forsaken route early on, and then changed your mind, and now you want a few Chaos Spawn units, then the Aspiring Champion offers you a path to achieve that. 
Or perhaps you're facing an enemy with high physical resistance where magical attacks will vastly improve your damage output. Or perhaps you just think aspiring champions look cool and want them in your army. Otherwise, I think chosen units are the better choice here. Now, since we already mentioned the Forsaken and Chaos spawn units, let's take a look at them in detail. Forsaken units can be upgraded for Marauders by rank 3, then at rank 4, they can be farther upgraded into Chaos spawn. Now, Forsakens are still melee infantry, with slightly better per entity health compared to their counterparts in the Chaos Warrior, but with only 80 entities per retinue, their overall health will be lower. In general, they have high armor and leadership stats with decent speed and slightly below average melee attack and defensive stats. Weapon strength is high, but mostly base damage. The 36 charge bonus pretty much cement them as an offensive charge unit, while being immune to psychology and having frenzy makes them much better than appear on paper, as frenzy provides essentially a 10% improvement across the board for all offensive stats such as damage, melee attack, as long as you maintain above 50% of your base leadership, which is going to be 35 for the Forsaken as they have 70 base leadership. So having immunity to psychology will help you maintain their leadership to keep Frenzy activated. Now looking at the Chaos Spawn, we have a completely different type of unit, as it now becomes an unbreakable monstrous infantry. And with only 16 entities, the Chaos Spawn will have massive per entity health and 1,500 mass. And their melee attack, melee defense, and weapon strength are all improved, but they are a glass cannon unit with only 10 armor. So essentially, Chaos Spawns are great against low mass infantry spamming enemies and an unbreakable alternative to Chaos Trolls, which are more heavily armored but have less weapon strength. Then moving on to cavalry options, there are the Marauder Horsemen with throwing axes and the standard ones with javelins. And the main difference between the two is that the throwing axe variety is the more defensive option with a shield that blocks 35% of frontal incoming range attack while having six more melee defense. Well, the standard unit is more range focused with more ammo and range, but javelins apparently have less armor piercing damage compared to the throwing axe. Essentially, the difference between the two units are rather minor, and honestly, both units are only okay as harassment units and chase down options, and are generally very weak. At rank 4, both units can be upgraded to the Marauder Horsemaster, which offers a slight improvement across the board in pretty much every single stat category as shown here, but it remains a weak unit, best utilized as a harasser or a chase down option. Then finally at rank 6, the Marauder Horsemaster gives up the ranged weapon to become either a Chaos Knight or a Chaos Knight with Lance. Now we finally have a legitimate shock cavalry unit that can be used in melee combat. And comparing the two, the main takeaway should be the Chaos Knights are much better in prolonged fights with their 16 extra melee defense stats, while the Chaos Knights with lances should be repeatedly cycle charged with their massive 80 charge bonus. If you do not cycle charge the lance variety of the Chaos Knight, then they're simply a worse version of the standard Chaos Knight across the board. Also note that all three types of Chaos Warriors can be upgraded into Chaos Knights at rank 6 as well. Now lastly, aside from becoming a cavalry, the Marauder Horsemen can actually become Chaos Chariots at rank 4, then Gore Beast Chariots at rank 6. Both of these units are massive low entity units with high health designed to crush infantry. Both have high armor piercing damage as well as a bonus to infantry modifier and super high charge bonus. While the Chaos Chariots will be faster than their Gore Beast upgrade, the across the board stat improvement for the Gore Beast as well as their 4130 mass will make them the better chariot option even if they're slower by 12 points. And with that, our Undivided Warrior of Chaos Warband upgrade guide is complete. Hopefully you will find this deep dive helpful in your upcoming Warrior of Chaos campaigns. And as always, leave a like to help out the channel and I will see you all same time tomorrow, as we'll do a similar deep dive video to cover the Slanesh Mark of Chaos Warband upgrade tree for Azazel's faction in the upcoming Champions of Chaos DLC. So until then, bye!